Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Today's topic, reading the scriptures in worship. When you gathered with your church for worship, either yesterday or one day recently, did you read the Bible? That's an interesting question, right? You probably think, well, surely we read the Bible. Perhaps you're thinking of the fact that when the preacher stood up to preach, he read a verse of the Bible, or he maybe read a section of the Bible that he was going to speak from. But my question is more than that. My question has to do with the public activity of the congregation gathered. Did you read the Bible as an act of worship? You see, this is what we are commanded to do, what we must of necessity to do if the Bible is to be front and center in the life of our churches. It's amazing to me that church groups that really emphasize the fact that the Bible is God's word, it's inerrant and infallible, and that we must judge everything in light of the scripture, often neglect the reading, the public reading of God's word in the worship assembly. While churches that don't really emphasize that truth have, as part of their liturgy, a reading of the Word of God from all its different sections, this seems to be so out of place. Look, if God's Word is to be the standard of our teaching and is to be the subject matter of our preaching, it's imperative that we read the Word of God in the Scripture. We read the assembly, in the assembly, that we read the scripture, not just a phrase and not just a a little section the preacher is going to preach about, but sections of the scripture, hearing it in the assembly. Now, this is a, a biblical practice. We can look to the Bible itself to find this pattern of worship. When the people gathered together, they gave attention to the reading of God's Word. And we need to read the Word of God. We need to read sections of the Word of God. We need to take the time to read the Word of God in the public assembly as an act of worship. Perhaps you're thinking, well, you know, the people read the Bible at home. They do daily Bible readings. Well, don't kid yourself. There may be some who do daily Bible readings, but the truth of the matter is a lot of people do not do daily Bible readings. And even if they did, that does not take the place of us reading the Word of God together as an assembled people, as an act of worship, hearing from God. Look, worship is to be a dialogue. That means that God speaks and we speak. God says something and we respond. Or God responds to us by means of his Holy Spirit and by means of his word. So how does God principally speak to us? Well, God principally speaks to us by means of his word, read in the assembly of believers, taught and expounded in the assembly of believers. See, God's words need to be front and center when we worship. It should inform the content of our worship. It should be part of the content of our worship. It should shape everything that we do. Let me share some scriptures with you that sort of emphasize this great necessity in the life of the church, in the life of God's people. If you turn in your Bible to Nehemiah chapter 8, you'll find this story. It's after the people of Israel have returned from the Babylonian captivity. And they have now been resettled in the land, and they have begun to rebuild the temple. Now, as they do so, uh, Nehemiah and Ezra are the leaders, and they call the people together. And we read in Nehemiah chapter 8 the following words. The people are gathered for this assembly in Nehemiah 8, 1. And all the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, 
all who could understand what they heard on the first day of the seventh month. And he read from it, facing the square before the water gate from early morning unto midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Israel the scribe stood on a, stood on a wooden platform that they had made for that purpose. And beside him stood these other men of the land. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all people. And as he opened it, all the people stood. And Ezra blessed the Lord, Yahweh, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped Yahweh with their faces to the ground. And also did these men who were with Israel and the Levites and helped the people to understand the law while the people remained in their places. They read from the book, from the law of God clearly, and they gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. Do you understand what's happening? They're reading God's word. They're explaining God's word. And the people are hearing from God and they're responding to God's revelation. Now, this should be what occurs, part of what occurs in the assembly of believers. But what about the example of our Lord Jesus Christ himself? If we turn in the Gospel of Luke to chapter 4, we find Jesus is in attendance at the synagogue. And this is what happens. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. So this is his home synagogue. And as he was, as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. Now, this means that there's an act of worship in which someone in the congregation reads the scripture. And if you go to a synagogue today, you can still see that this is the practice. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. Now, why that particular scroll? Well, because that must be the scroll they are reading in the assembly at that time. So it's probably an assigned reading of the day. But whether it was the assigned reading or not, he was given the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, and he unrolled the scroll, and he found the place where it is written. And now he quotes from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. You see, an act of worship in which our Lord himself reads the scripture. Now he also began to teach them. They sat down to teach in those days. And so he sat down, and the eyes of all of the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. An act of worship in which the scriptures were read. And then when we turn to the New Testament epistles, we find the commandments to read these letters that the apostles are writing to the churches. So if I turn to Colossians chapter 4, we have this commandment written from Paul in the letter that he sends to the Colossians. And he also indicates a letter that he sent to the Laodicea. And so all of these letters of Paul were written to the churches. Now, how were they communicated? Well, a messenger took the letter to the congregation. And when the congregation is assembled for worship, they read the letter that Paul read. They read it, they passed it on, and other groups read it as well. And perhaps it also formed the basis of their teaching that day. But we read in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 16. And when this letter has been read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and see that you also read the letter from Laodicea. So you can see this is the practice of the church. They must read the Word of God. If we read 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 13, we have this commandment. Again, Paul is writing for instructions to young Timothy. This is what you're to do in the churches. 
This is what you're to do as the leader of God's people. He says in chapter 4 and verse 13, Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation and to teaching. Reading God's Word in the assembly is an act of worship. It should be present in every church assembly. We should do this as part of the worship. Maybe you've never really thought about it, but you know the book of Revelation was written as a letter to be read to the churches. Listen, turn to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3. This is what was revealed. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. And then he writes to each one of the churches. But notice that each one of the churches is to read all the letters to all of the churches. And then the entire letter, the Apocalypse of Revelation, which is a recorded record of his vision, is to be read aloud in the churches. We spend an awful lot of time sometimes in Revelation with just little sections and trying to explain what this particular thing may mean and what that particular thing may mean. And maybe one of the real things we need to do is to take the book of Revelation, open it up in the public assembly, and read the entire thing from beginning to end as an act of worship. Or maybe we can break it in two. Read chapters 1 through 11 and then chapter 1, 12 to the end of the book. Two different times of worship, reading the book of Revelation. I challenge you. That's a great way to worship God through the reading of Scripture in the public assembly. You see, it's not enough that we read a verse here and there. It's not enough that we have teaching on phrases or sections. We must read God's Word. Read it in the context in which it is delivered. Read it. Think about it. Praise God with it. Read God's Word. Is it an act of worship? It's God speaking to His people. This has been Wayne Conrad with Bible Insights.